Welcome to another installment of the Tekken Clinic. My name is Ty Campbell, and in this video, we are going to go over programming our Tekken servos. Now, you can follow along with our Hotwire servo programming guide on the website. You can find that at teamtekencom slash servoguide.html. That is going to bring up this web page right here. And it starts out with your basics, which is uh, just explaining how the, the GUI works, the graphic user interface. And the first window you're going to see after you install the software is going to be this one right here. And it's going to say either connect your servo or no hot wire found. Now, if it says no hot wire found, you need to make sure that that is plugged into your PC with the USB cable and then snap that firmly into the hot wire itself. So we're going to take this guy right here. I'm going to use a hot wire 2.0 for this demonstration. Should see the red light, that means you are good to go. You can use a hot wire 1.0, a 2.0, or a 3.0 to program the Tekken servos. The only thing with the 3.0 is Bluetooth function will not be available because there's no way to power the servo to power the Bluetooth in order to actually program via Bluetooth. That's only available on our ESCs with an easy data port. So if you are using a Hotwire 3.0, you will need part number TT3848 that is available on the Tekken web store, and that's the adapter wire to let you plug into the servo receiver wire. With our Hotwire connected to our PC, we're gonna fire up the Hotwire software, and it'll bring up this first tab. There's a couple buttons out at the bottom. Reset is just going to reset all of the settings inside the servo to factory default. The read button is going to read any current settings that are actually saved in the servo. So if you're in here making changes, make sure you hit save first before you hit read, because if you hit read, it will disregard any changes you've made in here that weren't saved and read the actual settings saved in the servo currently. And then the save button is obviously going to save your settings to your servo. Up here we have our little hamburger flyout menu. There's just the about that just has the information about the software, such as version, uh, and then some emails and our website that you can contact us. And then there's also servo recovery. So if you're ever doing a servo update and it fails for any reason, like the internet went out or the servo got unplugged, plug it back in, hit servo recovery, and then that should bring it back up and hard reflash the software. Let's plug in our servo, and there is a white line on the servo receiver plug. Make sure you get the polarity correct. Plug it in. So we have a T250 right here is going to be the identification of the servo. Um, the first thing right here is your feel setting. Now feel, this is going to be on your performance tab right here. This basically changes how aggressive the servo will hold position. Um, so usually right here in the middle is factor default. If you want the servo to be a lot more aggressive, a lot more twitchy, slide that up here to the aggressive side. If it's too twitchy for you, you can go ahead and turn that down to the mild side. So the next adjustment we are going to look at is the speed limit. Now this is seconds that it takes to get to 60 degrees. So for the servo to traverse 60 degrees, uh, and this is just a normal servo speed rating, this 0.03 doesn't have anything to do with this T250. The T250 maximum speed, and let's just do this at six volts just to make everything easy, uh, is actually 0.09. So, 0.09 is the absolute fastest it can be at six volts, so you can't speed the servo up. You can only do that by increasing the input voltage. So if the servo is too fast for you, you can go ahead and slow this down, and it'll go out quite a ways. You can make these things as slow as you want to make them. The next item on the list, torque. Torque is the strength of the servo. So right now, they come out of the box at 100%. That means on this T250 at six volts, you are gonna be getting uh, about 250 ounces of torque. So if you wanna take the torque down for whatever reason, you can just use these arrows right here on the sides to change the percentage of torque you would like to have. Next item on the performance tab is torque delay. So torque delay is basically the programmed time allotment used to prevent servo failure. So if you set torque delay to, let's say 0.5 seconds, 
you'll get full torque for that amount of time and after that the servo will reduce the torque to the percentage set. If you set time to zero, then the servo will always be limited to the torque percentage set. So let's say you want to have 90% torque, but you want all the torque initially. You will take torque delay and say, all right, so we go 0.5 seconds. After 0.5 seconds, it is going to reduce torque to 90%. So the next tab is the setup tab. And again, you can follow along. This is all on the Tekken website, teamtekencom slash servoguide.html. First item on the list is direction. You can reverse the servo throw in here rather than doing it on your radio, or you can do it on your radio. Either way is fine. Uh, this is just one option to be able to do in here in the programming. Travel. This is actually where you can set your endpoints. So right now, or 60 degrees either direction and you can see right here this is the servo's current position so if I move the servo it changes how many degrees so say I want to set my endpoint when turning right so full stops on this low C buggy sets it at 42.6 degrees so if you want to take that and change it you look at the top of the servo you'll see that the servo rotates counterclockwise to turn the car right. So you will change travel CCW counterclockwise and you can change that down to 42.5. Now what this does is sets your endpoint permanently inside the servo. So this is as far as it will ever travel even if you increase travel from the radio side of things. Now another cool feature on these is the ability to set center anywhere we want to. Now in the previous video we did we already set this up and set it to its natural program center. Um, which on this car, if you actually fire it up, let it hit center and then turn it back off, plug the hot wire in, you're gonna see that our center point is right now about minus 8.1 degrees. So you can actually turn this wherever you want. So say we wanna center it here. We hit center and now that's your true zero. Soft start. This is a pretty neat little feature. If you don't want your servo to have full speed and full torque at first, when you first turn it on, um, this, this can be nice just in case it does get turned on accidentally and the wheels are bound up or there's something stuck in the steering rack or uh, any kind of reason. A lot of airplane guys will do this just so they can see flaps move real slow to make sure nothing's bound up. So on default, the soft start is off. If you turn it on, you can set your speed and then you can also set the amount of torque so if you want this to just move real slow and not have a whole lot of torque it's kind of cool to watch you can power it up and say you got your wheels turned all the way to the right it will travel extremely slow so 0.6 it'll take half a second for it to get 60 degrees so it might take anywhere from a quarter of a second to a half a second to center back up depending on how far the servo is off center and then it won't have full torque in case it does get stuck for whatever reason Next up is the alarm tab, and the only alarm turned on by default is the temperature alarm. Uh, you can choose Celsius or Fahrenheit. We're gonna click it over to Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's 176 degrees default or 80 degrees Celsius. And right now it is on and it is set to latch. Now latch means that anytime an alarm triggers, it's going to keep triggering until the servo is reset. So you would have to turn power off to the car or unplug your receiver pack and power it back on for the alarm to go away. If you don't latch it, it's just temporary and then as soon as it would cool back down below that 176, the alarm would cease to alarm. Now when the max temp alarm does happen, this is your torque setting. You can set it to turn the torque down so that it'll try and cool itself off. So right now the default is anytime the max temp alarm goes off, we hit 50% torque. You're gonna notice the servo probably feel a little bit more sluggish. Uh, it's not gonna be as strong. That's only temporary if it's on. If it's latched, it will stay that way until you power the servo off and back on again. The other alarms we have are voltage minimum and maximum. By default, they are not on or latched. So this is something you can set. 
Uh, we go up to 8.6 is our highest and our lowest is 3.7. You can adjust these so that you can see if your receiver pack or if your BEC is dropping out. The bind relief. Now bind relief is a setting that is basically servo protection. Um, anytime the servo is bound or it can't move to its target position, it will trigger bind relief and immediately reduce torque to whatever percentage you have set here. And you can also set a tone and have it latch if you wish. Fail safe mode, this is a safety feature to where if you ever lose signal, you can tell it to hold its last known position. You can tell it to go to a programmed position and then you'll use that down here. This is FS, fail safe position. You can change programmed with speed. So this will be your position and also what speed you want it to travel there at. You can slow it down. You can set it to a motor free condition where it'll basically just be like it's powered off. And lastly is motor brake. This is just going to apply brakes to the brushed motor inside the servo and it will not attempt to move. The info tab, you can pick a custom name for your servo. It tells you the serial number, the model number of the servo, the total run time, and the total on time, the total run time. So on time is any time it's got power, but it might be idle. Run time is any time it's actually moving. So you can see that this servo is actually very new. It only has a minute and 20 seconds on it right now. Servo version. This one has 1.20, and I actually need to update it to the newer version. So right here, you'll have update. This will update to any new firmware that we have available. There is an export. This will export all of your settings. Make sure you save your settings first. So anything we changed needs to be written to the servo first. Wait till this is done. Then you can export it. You can send this to anywhere you want to. Just save them under my documents, servo setups, or somewhere you can find it. Import. You can load settings. So you can make different profiles if you want to switch this between cars, if you want different speeds for different tracks or anything like that. These are really handy tools and you can even share them with your friends if you want to. So that's the rundown on programming Teak and servos with the Hotwire interface on PC. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below because I do try and read and respond to them. You can also shoot us an email support at teamteakin.com or get a hold of us on Facebook Messenger. Thanks for watching this clinic video on programming Teak and servos. I'm Ty Campbell. We'll see you next time.